We are several hours into a tormenting slog on last year's Baja 1000 race course. And despite our trucks being very well equipped, Tanner and I have found ourselves dreaming of future improvements for this sort of terrain. You use a trophy truck right about now? Mm -hmm. Long travel suspension. 40 inch tires. 800 horsepower or more. Race catheters. Respirator breathing systems. Pit crew. Onboard fire control systems. Chase helicopter. We need to watch Dust to Glory again. Yes, we do. We're living it. When we get back, you and yes. me, pizza night. Oh, yeah. But right now, we're in Baja, driving on the Baja 1000 race course, so this will have to do. The Baja Special is presented by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. And in association with Patriot Campers and Pecor Systems. And Toyota, the official vehicle provider of X Overland. Okay, in the efforts of uh, finding camp tonight, uh, the vans... Trailers are up on deck here. Uh, I'm gonna come to a park right now. And all three of the vans trailing crew are gonna get in this truck and get us into camp. Starting now. Good luck. <laughs> Expect the unexpected. I'm gonna need them to navigate though. I know how to navigate. I know, but I need the map. I'll help you with it. Alright, we're just gonna take a second and get Dan on the Garmin, figure out where we are. Sounds good. Do you know where the camp is? No, we have to Oh, we have to one. pick one? Because the sun's probably gonna set, like, a lot sooner, since the mountains are up there. So Let's say 6.30, that still gives us 40 minutes. I say we probably get past whatever this is up here, and then when we find a good one up there, probably like 10 minutes past it or so, then we can stop and film. Since the sun sets in another two and a half hours, and then we'll probably find a camp at least 10 or so minutes past this, and then set up and start filming for tonight. It won't, it'll set sooner than that well, behind those mountains. Well, sunset's at about 7.23. Can anyone confirm that on their watches? Confirmed. Confirmed. Okay, so it's five minutes to six, so there's an hour and a half, but we got those big mountains, so we'll, we should probably keep driving for about a half an hour. Good call. Just run us through the usual systems of getting into camp, but we're on your go. Uh, would that include, like, calling for drone and everything like that? 100%. Okay. Because we filmed that going into camp. So once we kind of know the area. As the Van Stralen crew begins to rise to the challenge of their new role as expedition leaders, none of us could have predicted that their leadership skills would be put to the test almost immediately. There's a military truck coming up behind us. They're good now. Okay. Interesting. Windows down, sunglasses off. Hola. 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 Uh, no. Uh, no, lo siento. Action. Okay. okay. Get out, please. Yes. All of us? Get out. Bajar. Todos, todos, todos. Okay. No, 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 no arma? No. No? no. Nada. <laughs> Nada. Oh yeah. Bueno, eh? Gloves. Son muy buenos. We're cutting uh, la leña. <laughs> Para? A la leña? Yeah. Si. Yes. Sí. <laughs> the 
this point, the military truck is to our rear. Its fully loaded machine gun is pointed down at us as we are inspected. All other soldiers stay to the side in case the gunner needs to go to work. However, this encounter is a potential blessing in disguise. So is this in, like, what is this? Bad area. For what? Bad people. Samson. This is kind of a wider spot just up here. This is, yeah. They got an FAL. Yeah. Luckily, I learned the word for firewood before we came, because he asked about the machete, and I was like, for the lenya. <laughs> He's like, ah. Oh. We are instructed to get in the trucks and get out of the way so they can continue their patrol, leaving our new leadership with a follow-up decision. Just gonna step in and give you some ideas. Uh, right now we're potentially on the X, right? Like we're in a bad spot. So either we keep moving forward or back. Let's try and make that call as soon as we can. And then we can figure the rest out as we're moving. Daniel's saying uh, he thinks it'd be better to move back. Same with Caroline. If that is your decision, go ahead and roll on it and uh, get us into camp. With the inspection complete and considering the new information we learned from the military personnel, our new leadership decides to leave the area and begin looking for an alternative location to set up camp for the night. You guys stated that there's a bypass that looks like that road kind of goes around the military checkpoint, so that makes sense that they'd be, you know, patrolling that. Another left and just uh, up to the right up here. Looks pretty flat and good. We'll just pull in then. Sounds good. I think you guys made a good move about turning around. Mm -hmm. If they say that there's bad traffic in there, we're not really sure what they mean and all that. Turn back around. Not we worth it made our way back towards San Felipe, which is more populated. We're not so remote, but yet we haven't gone back into town. We're back in here in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. I feel totally fine. And we're, what we're really doing is going off of their advice, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. like, there was no recognized threat other than them saying, this has bad traffic at night. You may not want to camp here. Mm -hmm. So we moved back to where I think is a very, very safe camp. Mm -hmm. So, good job. I think that was good decision making. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On tonight's menu, we have pork, pork tenderloin, tenderloin, potatoes, chop them up, yeah. <laughs> throw some onions in them, throw some stuff, whatever we have in the pantry. Mm -hmm. Throw it all together, throw some butter on it, because yeah. butter makes everything taste better. As Caroline and Rochelle begin cooking the potatoes, a propane issue arises. And it smells like propane. <laughs> oh, it's oozing. So, I'm gonna pull off the quick release. So it's coming out there, there's some. Let me close it. All right, <laughs> the bug. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> just drilled out the check valve and completely wallered out the hole inside of it. Now it's just like nobody's business. This has one of these. Woo! Almost didn't show my breath on that one. I just did some salt and the seasonings I had in the galley, which is it's Johnny seasoning. It's a garlic Parmesan, like garlic toast seasoning. And it's my favorite go-to. I use it on veggies, meats, almost everything. And then I put a little bit of some of our friends' Holy Smokes barbecue seasoning on there. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tanner. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Ooh, that looks good. Doing the poke test. I think she done. With the propane issue resolved, Rochelle and Caroline finished cooking a delicious dinner fuel up the hungry team after an eventful day on the trail. Oh, <laughs> what did I do? 
Way to go. Peter! Oh, nice. I'm sorry, I was trying to check water. There we go. <laughs> Still half. <laughs> nice. Good job. After a great night's sleep, we begin to pack up our camp. As we approach the kitchen, we notice that we are not the only ones that had enjoyed last night's dinner. The water in the sink has attracted hundreds of bees, and none of us like bees, not even a little bit. rid of the bees inside, Dan has a genius idea. We should just drive down the road with all of it open and suck the little shysters right out of there. Well, this is a first. <laughs> Now all we have to do is get the trash dropped off in town. I drew the short stick for that one. If you're going to travel in Mexico, or anywhere else in the world for that matter, you better get used to getting your water from unusual places. At the gas station, we get permission to filter right from their garden hose. Priming initiated. gas, full of water, we're up and running. This morning we've been a little worried that we would have a short day. So we've decided to do something else and explore a little deeper into the Baja 1000 tracks. Peter and Caroline are back in the lead of the convoy, which can be stressful at times. Clear after that red truck. I might pull up to the right here because there's a good open spot and we can, I think we can swing around and pull in to the left there. Stop going. So wide. Look how much space. I know, I'm just saying. Yeah, I, I think we could have. Are we clear to the rear? We're clear. In one and three quarter miles, head to May 12, 2021 10, 27M on the right. That's a yeah. big drop. Uh, uh, this is a this is a big drop. Uh, there's like concrete and nails. Oh. Nails? Do I look good to drop off this? Yeah, you look good to me. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> that was rough. I made some funny interior GoPro in here. <laughs> awesome. Oh, I've already got a bit of a cold sweat looking at the <laughs> footage. <laughs> Today I am learning navigation. This is really exciting for me because I've always been super interested in it. Um, I'm kind of figuring out our route to the Laguna Salada mud flats between our paper map and our digital map on our Garmin Overlander. And I have a pretty good idea of where we're going today. We'll see if we end up where we <laughs> where we want to get to today. We wanted to be off-road, but this 80-mile stretch of trail is becoming more than we bargained for. After a few hours of what we thought would be faster course miles, our tolerance for rough roads is hitting its limit. Right now, we are wishing we were doing something else, 
anything else. And let me tell you, we have been doing something else. <laughs> <laughs> this is brutal. It's just like poking your way through rocky 4x4 four four trail for mile after mile after mile. If you're gonna come through here, you better have big tires and good skid plates. Taking a little break here. I thought we'd show you the map. After San Felipe. At about 11 this at, morning. At about 11 a.m. this morning. It's now 5.30 and that's as far as we've made it. Long day, slow moving. Makes you feel like you're not doing much. Occasionally, we are coming across old signage from the race, and we do our part to help clean up the course. As the miles drone on, driver fatigue sets in and the skid plates and differentials are starting to take a few more hits than usual. As evening approaches, the road levels out and we pick up the pace. And it looks like this long challenging day is finally giving us a break. After a hard landing last night, we have found ourselves camped at a spectacular dune site. You just don't know where you wake up here sometimes. And hopefully our course through the dunes today will be forgiving and allow for some driver training. Rochelle is highly skilled in the dunes. She's participated in three Rally Asia de Gazelle rallies through the Saharan Desert in Morocco, and is a winner of the U.S. Rebel Rally. So Caroline gets voluntold to take this opportunity and learn about sand driving. The generals have been aired down, and the rest is up to Caroline. When you're in the bottom, that's where you're gonna get all of your momentum. Yeah. So when you hit that bottom, try and get the momentum you need to get to start climbing again. Yeah. Yep, you keep are. going. And just find whatever line is good through all this vegetation. Let off a little bit. This is gonna get hard. Good. Yep, great. Come I'd come passenger a little bit. Yep. Yep, stay right through here. Momentum, a little more throttle. Yep, I would stay on this line. You're good, you're good. Give it some gas, and we're gonna start cutting driver. Yep, driver, driver, gas. Good, good job. Uh, throttle, left. Throttle, 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 throttle. Throttle, throttle. Turn that way. Okay, stop. So, yeah. and stop. Digging. Yeah, she's pretty soft in here. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. Okay. Back up. <laughs> Go ahead. You're doing great. Sand's just soft. So, okay, let's, okay, we're good right there. Stop. You see this? these rocks over here? Like it flattens out oh, and you yeah. kind of get some gravel. Yeah. Okay, go, 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 go. All right, so straighten back out. Nice, okay, okay. Action, go, go, go. Okay, back. Your wheels are too far, there you go. Yep, stay on it, go right. Straighten out. Good, 
good, good, good. Stay in it, stay in it. Just stay out of the tracks. You're good. Looking awesome. Good. To the right. Way to go. Oh, stay in it. Stay in it, stay in it, stay in it, stay in it. Come on. <laughs> let off, didn't ya? No way. There you go. Stay in it, stay in it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, go. Now turn down, driver. Good. Yep. Pop. Oops. Here to the. Yep. Okay. Passenger. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow, slow, slow. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Not that slow. <laughs> <laughs> Everything went fully. That's why I was like, you gotta have some talk to it. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was fun. All right, we're gonna come back down. <laughs> Made that look easy, Caroline. Awesome. <laughs> you did great. Whew. How did it feel? Awesome. Yeah. It was so fun. Obviously, there's a lot I need to learn, but it was really fun yeah. to experience how that feels and mm -hmm. stuff. And thank you for all of your Of awesome course, yeah. Not to be outdone, Peter and Ryan take a stab at the hill as well. Despite the fun going around, we must keep going. So we air up a bit and hit another long stretch of trail before the heat of the day kicks in. Time is moving on and we have a ways to go. Between us and our destination lay the Laguna Salada mudflats, the perfect place to make up some time. During this push, if we reach the highest temperatures that we have seen, 105 degrees Fahrenheit is registered on the Tundra's dash. Now with the dry lake bed in our favor, we make up all the miles we lost out on yesterday. Looks like we are back on schedule. And our destination is rumored to be paradise. 33 miles to the hot springs. As the crow flies or as the track says? Well, as the crow flies. As the crow flies. It is 33 miles as the crow flies to our camp. Stop 33 that. miles as the crow flies. I think we can almost fly like the crow right now. Throughout this trip, we have been blown away by the ever-changing landscapes of the Baja Desert. But our jaws drop as we roll in to our next camp. This magical spot is the Canyon of Guadalupe. This really stop here. Yeah, right. I just went into paradise and I just walked out to whatever this is. <laughs> Let's get in our cars and go in there. Nice. Okay. Yes. I'm glad to see that there is a cool cold pool. It's uh, 120 degree water and 100 degree heat. Whew. A little much for this guy. I'm sweating over here. Sweating. Sitting here just the sweating. <laughs> but this place is so cool. It's the, it is just exactly what we needed at the end of a day like that. Exactly what we needed at the end of a trip like this. We've been going hard, it's been awesome. Whew. Get set up, and relax, have a cerveza.
Ryan, I think it's a margarita night. Brian has one more chance to make a good margarita. If he fails here, there's no more chances. Come to find out, he makes the world's best margarita. So good, we vowed not to film it. Very good. That was a sweet camp. That was amazing. It was so cool to come into after driving across the desert. Like you just see the mountains in the distance, but like, uh -huh. like nestled in those mountains across some of the driest desert ever. There's like hot springs and oasis. Right. It's so crazy. Crazy. With a great night of rest behind us, our final miles will put us on the build site for our Homes of Hope project. The build day has arrived and we get up early and head out to the site. This is the home site of Jesus and Maria. Just after they acquired their land, Jesus was in a motorcycle accident that placed them into a financial crisis. They have lived in this makeshift shelter with their two kids. Today, we are here to help get them back on their feet with a home they can build a future from. The Homes of Hope team has prepped a concrete pad over the last week, and in the next two days, we will build the house and conclude our time here in Mexico. Truck carrying supplies gets bogged down, and our overland recovery skills come into play. Who knew that the most adventurous recovery would be the build truck? on the home build day. It's all hands on deck. Everyone pitches in, including the kids. Tanner in particular has taken to this project and he appears to have a renewed energy even after a fast paced trip. Wall by wall, Jesus is standing up a new future for his family. And speaking of family, we have one last surprise for the Van Stralen crew. <laughs> Ryan's wife Megan and his kids join us in the effort as well. Say, I am Riker. After some quick hugs and laughter, it's time to get back to work. Two days on the build, the home is nearly finished. Well, it is about 12.20 on the second day of the build and we are basically done. We're just finishing cleaning up, got the furniture in. Now we're waiting for the family to get back from shopping with Rochelle and Caroline. And we get to hand over the keys and surprise them. These keys represent 20 years of work for Jesus and his family, at his current income of just over $100 a week. We at X Overland wish their family a very blessed future. 
having the opportunity to meet them has certainly impacted us with their positive outlook on life despite their circumstances. You get to travel the world and you get to see things, but there's something about giving back that makes, I mean, this is more, this is cooler than a lot of the stuff that we've just gone and done, you know? There are times at the end of an expedition when the crew feels completely drained and in need of rest. Not this time. Every time I come down, it's always new surprises. There is so much diversity in culture, so much diversity in landscape. It is always worth your time to be able to come down and see so many cool things in such a condensed place. Getting to see more of Baja on another level than most people see it, going into places that very few people, especially foreigners and travelers, go to and getting to connect with the culture and the people has been incredible. Um, and I've never, like my whole view of Baja and Mexico in general has just completely been changed. I really feel like a lot of what I've learned here I can definitely take back to our own trips and with our family and become a better driver or navigator and all the other things that I've got to learn and kind of dip my toes into doing. So it's definitely been an excellent experience. The amount of experiences and places we got to see in this short time is absolutely amazing. And uh, I've got to learn a lot of new skills, navigation being one of the main ones, which is something I've always been interested in. So I'm glad that I got a chance to learn that and not only learn about it, but also practice it in the field. What I learned about myself on this trip was how important it is to step out of your comfort zone. I'm so glad that I pushed through it. I said I can do this and I did it and it just felt amazing. When you do that you can have the most amazing experiences of your life. Anytime I've gone on a trip or done or taken on a challenge or done something, I've never once regretted it at the end of it. Even if it's hard. So here's to staying curious, um, always being teachable. You sure learn a lot when you travel the world. It's pretty cool. This, I think, really is one of the better places to go and experiment with that because the people are so great. So, yeah, I feel really fulfilled from this trip. And there's nothing better than traveling by vehicle, living out of them, seeing what they're capable of, camping and exploring. I mean, overlanding, the overland travel lifestyle, man, it is just so rewarding and so adventurous and you should try it. We are given one chance at this life, so no matter what's going on in the world, make the most of every day. In the words of Warren Miller, if you don't do it this year, you'll only be one year older when you do. So there, set a bearing and go. They didn't have a pulse this morning. He bought a big chocolate milk, which they affectionately call bloat. <laughs> <laughs> then he drank all of that. He made his brother try it, and they, they didn't trust each other, so they fought over that for like three minutes about <laughs> if he should try it or not. And then he drank it, all of it, and then he went back to the back seat and then we drove off and then I was like, are you feeling okay? He's like, no, I'm not feeling so good because I drank all my chocolate milk. And then he's like, maybe I'll just eat this box of Oreos. So then he pulls out this box of Oreos and he says, I got this for just one dollar. I said, awesome. He pulls it open and he starts eating it. Then he's like, I don't feel so good. Cracks a Coke, starts drinking the Coke. And then by the time we got here, oh, and then and then he passed out for like three oh, yeah. hours. Sugar coma. He was just gone for three hours, like melted into the seat, part of the seat covers. <laughs> That's some solid work. <laughs> here all day, Tanner. 
You're dribbling on your foot. <laughs>